98% of the DNA is not, doesn't have gene, genetic, uh, doesn't code for, for genes. Only 2% is used for coding genes. And so people said most of the DNA is completely worthless and it's simply there as building up these parts of DNA which have not yet produced useful genes. And so what happens then, junk DNA, and it became known as junk DNA back in the early 70s because they couldn't see a purpose for the DNA that you had in the cells. And it was classified as junk DNA because it was thought of as being the remains of nature's experiment, experiments which failed. It has not yet formed anything useful. It's just junk littering up the DNA. Richard Dawkins had a very um, interesting comment about 10 years ago. Creationists might spend some earnest time speculating on why the creator should bother to litter genomes with untranslated pseudogenes and junk tandem repeat DNA. This was only 10 years ago. They still couldn't figure out there's no purpose for it. It's got to be left over from the evolutionary process that hasn't yet developed into something useful. Okay? But since then, in the last 10 years, they found that this so-called junk DNA is vital to life, is absolutely critical to many aspects of life in reproduction, in development of, of bodily structures, and in uh, passing on genetic information to offspring. And in fact, um, one of the, um, the leading researchers has made the comment that classifying unknown DNA as junk DNA that may well go down as one of the biggest mistakes in the history of molecular biology. What was damned as junk because it was not understood may in fact turn out to be the very basis of human complexity. So for 20 years, the Darwinian theory of developing genes through random mutations within the DNA has been a science stopper because it prohibited looking seriously at what was considered junk, which would be expected if that's how mutations occurred and built up in the gene. Okay, so the biggest mistake in the history of molecular biology was following this idea of junk DNA. If you look, for example, at the, the next slide shows uh, an interesting um, uh, slide on fossils. If you look at what you expect to see in Darwinian evolution, you would expect to see a tree. The original organism was here, and as it spread and, and, and spread off into multiple organisms, you would have a tree of life, the biological tree of life. Now this happens to be uh, limited to the Cambrian uh, uh, strata, which is the lowest level that has fossils in it. But if you look at the lowest level that has any life at all in fossils, had life at all in fossils, what you actually see is the bottom. So these are, these Morphology is just a big name for structures, body structures. So what you would expect to see is a, a tree of life that had different body structures being formed all over the place. What you actually see is that when a body structure is formed, it remains the same all the way through it or else it goes extinct. You don't see different body structures morphing into other parts. So the actual data indicates something like this. Um, one of the most interesting uh, parts, if you go to the next slide, this also extends all the way up to the present. This is from the Encyclopedia Britannica uh, a few years back. If you look at the black, you don't have to re re be able to read this, but this is the bi basically the biological tree. The black part of it, the solid part, represents the actual fossils that have been found. So he, here's a section that has actual fossils that are found, but
But look at the white parts. The white parts is the assumed connections. You see any black in the assumed connection parts? No. So what is assumed is that it had to have had original source and everything developed on this tree. But that's not what the data actually shows. One of the most interesting ones, in the next slide, the trilobite. I don't know if you ever heard about a trilobite or not. It was a marine animal that lived in the Cambrian, in the very lowest level of fossil bearing rocks. Has eyes here. But those eyes are really, really interesting. It supposedly lived uh, about a half a billion years ago. But it's very interesting because the eyes, the lenses, are made out of inorganic calcite, calcium carbonate. There's no DNA in it at all. And really what it amounts to is it's a, this little animal here had a prosthetic device, had a pair of glasses. Because it didn't have, it was not biological. Now the biological processes manufactured you know, the, the lenses, but the lenses themselves were non-organic. And it's really interesting because uh, these are two different um, trilobites. And these are some uh, lenses that were developed, the top one by Descartes and the, and the bottom one by Huygens in the mid-17th century. Uh, and if you can look, they're, they're pretty, uh, pretty close to that. The, the lenses were optimized for correction of spherical aberrations. And uh, some really interesting um, um, analyses of these lenses, remember this is in the very lowest level that contains any fossils, that suddenly appears, there's no trace of any ancestors of these things, they just suddenly appear and they have glasses made of inorganic material. The next slide has a couple of interesting quotes. Um, the trilobites had solved a very elegant physical problem and apparently knew about all these laws of physics concerning optics. A really good one. These lenses optimize both light collecting and image formation better than any lens that optical physics has ever been able to formulate. Can you envision that? That when people see that, they say, this thing that lived a half a billion years ago had these inorganic lenses that had optical properties better than any that modern day physicists have been able to formulate. Yeah, okay. And it is the only animal on record that has been discovered so far that has inorganic lenses. The only one. So, um, final quote, the design of the trilobite's eye lens could well qualify for a patent disclosure. <laughs> mm. And people think it happened by accident. It wasn't designed. Sure, that makes sense, I guess, um, if you like that sort of thing. Uh, the next slide basically confirms what the previous slides have shown. There's a sudden appearance of animals of various types. And once they appear, they're fixed and, and until they go extinct or else live until today. There have been lots of examples of that. One of the most famous examples that used to be, uh, there's a fish called the coelacanth fish. Uh, it used to be used as what's called an index fossil. If you found a rock that had a coelacanth fish fossil in it, you could date that rock as being 70 million years old because that's when coelacanths lived. That was until they caught a live one off the coast of Madagascar in 1938. <laughs> okay, 